Good morning. Today, I want to show you something from the Bible. It's kind of a, a bad testimony. But it's something that happens. And Mark, Mark chapter 4, verse 4. And this is the parable of the sower. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the falls of the earth, air came and devoured it up. Now that was the parable. Here's the meaning of the parable. In Mark chapter 4, verse 15. And these are they by the wayside. When the word is sown, you're going out there, you're witnessing. However, whatever you're doing. Whatever ministry. Because all the ministries I, I have been in. When you're, when you're actively doing something with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care if you're door knocking, street preaching, passing out gospel tract. You got an open Bible. You're dealing with a co-worker. Okay? I'm not talking about one specific Ministry. I'm talking about when you're going out telling people about Jesus. And these are found by the wayside when the word is sown. You, you've got an open Bible. You've got scripture. And you got an interested party. Or you will have. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me get the first fact right here. I, I'm a street preacher. I'm evangelist, and I have knocked on doors. I'm not against it. If I had better legs and feet, I'd probably do it. I used to do it. Um, I know in Florida it's legal, but in Connecticut, we would go in parking lots. We would put gospel tracks on windshields. There's multiple, multiple proper ways. And let me tell you. The first one to show up where you're going to go is God, the Holy Spirit. The next one is going to show up before you show up is the devil. And then you're going to show up. Now, if, you're not going to, if you don't show up with, with the Holy Spirit, the devil ain't going to be there. Okay, if you got a worldly means... Satan's not going to be there because he doesn't have him to fear. But I'm talking about a proper public ministry. Whatever you do, when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown out in their hearts. Now let me tell you, I have seen this everywhere. And one particular way is now I don't know how it is in other places where you are, but in, in Walmart we have to bag, we have to check our own stuff out and bag our own stuff. So we'll scan our items and we put them in the bags and we put the bags in our cart. And the next bag I am not going to use will be left behind on the rack. I'll open it up and put a gospel track in it. Walmart's caught on to it. And I have had times at Walmart that, I don't know if they're watching me on the monitors, but as soon as I show up, as soon as I put that gospel track in that bag and I start taking off, they're right over there to take that right out. They're Satan. Don't tell me Walmart is Christian when they're hampering the gospel. We had another time, this, this mentioned some illustrations of, we were at the uh, uh, flea market. And we're at our booth and we're talking to this one person, and lot, one particular mind, but this has happened often. And, and, you know, we got them interested. We have the Bible open. We got tracks out. We show the different booklets we have. And the person is just listening. And, man, Something's going to happen. Yeah. At the other table, his wife says, Honey, come here and take a look at this. And he turns around and you lost. That's Satan. That's Satan coming over and taking that gospel track out of that bag. That's Satan, his wife. Hey, honey, come over here and look at this. And... 
there's all kind of phenomenon that, that the devil uses to distract somebody from hearing the gospel. And, and with the public ministry I have, preaching out, you know, people who don't want to hear preaching, there may be someone there who wants to hear the pre preaching. Wow, what's that guy doing? I'm kind of interested. And then a loud mouth, I can think of right now, one loud mouth woman. Hey, who do you think you are? This is what she's supposed to do. That's Satan. We had this weekend, it was windy. And it was actually, the wind was blowing tents and, and, and canopies over. While I was preaching. And I think you can see it on one of the videos. That's the devil. When you, whatever you're doing, you got somebody, it, uh, listen, I believe you can use a gospel track if you don't have a Bible. You need the word of God, though. When you've got somebody who's interested or you've got a ministry that's promising and there is an interruption and things go about in a total opposite direction, Friend, that's Satan. I had one time visitors come to church and I was preaching that night <clears throat> and the visitors brought their children and their children just raised a ruckus in the church. They were just horrible. And I asked my visitor, I said, what did you think of my message? Well, we didn't even hear it. I know why you didn't hear it. Satan was in the children. Um, I want you to know full, full forth. And these things, by the way, say where the word is sown, when they have heard Satan comes to me. When you have set forth whatever you're going to do, whether it is a public ministry you do daily, weekly, or monthly, or, hey, let's just go pass out gospel tracts. Oh, let's just go see if I can find somebody. I want you to know. I want you. I, 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 now I'm saying, I've said, I've said this often. I, I preach about this. I want you to know the Holy Spirit goes with you if it's a proper witness. I'm not talking about worldly, carnal means. I'm talking about if it's true, dedicated, biblical gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with a sincere heart, with prayer and, and uh, repenting of your sins, you're going out approved of God. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit goes with you. And I'm telling you right now, the devil goes with you. We had um area where we used to pass out gospel tracts down here in Daytona. Multiple times. And listen, I'm not talking about one or two times. I'm talking about multiple times. And children. And various places where we try giving children a chick gospel track. And we got several children gospel tracks that we can hand to them. Free. Of interest. And we've seen the mother. Usually it's the mother. It, it, yeah. Yank that kid, drag that kid down the street. I remember one episode. Dragging that kid down the sidewalk. Away from us. That's the, that's the devil. And you better believe that when I see that happen, if I'm preaching at that moment, I'm going to preach. It is your job to bring your children to Jesus Christ. If not, you are the devil. How many times often have we had security stop this? My son, one time back in Connecticut, Walmart, was we go grocery shopping and he would pass out gospel tracts and they forbade him to come back into that store. And I said, Well, you know what, my son passed out God, we don't and we don't we never went back to that store. We um I'm just trying to think of other other events where the prevention of the gospel, where, where we at the farmer's market, we've had many times, we've had the dealings with the police. That 
that day, we've had to interrupt the preaching. We had to interrupt the gospel track. And, you know, we had to go home and, and, and call the lawyers. And that's the devil. Now, we won the victory. Praise God. But our full time that we wanted for the ministry that day, it was interrupted and stopped. And I have had times, you know, where homeless have come and interrupted us. And when you are involved in a public ministry and there is an interruption of mayhem, that's the devil. <clears throat> now, there, there could be good interru interruptions. You can maybe, you know, well, I didn't get anywhere. And here's somebody else over here. Hey, I want to hear it. My pastor told me, told us yesterday. He was at one place. It sounded like it was like an apartment building. And in response to him telling, telling him about Jesus, I'll, I'll do it later. And from what I got at the story, he turned away, started walking away. He hears a voice saying, what about me? You going to talk to me? And he turned around, there was a woman sitting there somewhere. And he said to her, he said, hey, did you hear what I said? He goes, yeah. Now, that's a good interruption. And that was a double barrel. <laughs> you, the, the first butt barrel to the guy he was talking to, dud. I'll do it later. And that's an interruption of Satan with an excuse. I'll talk about it. But... <clears throat> Turn around. The other barrel had a had the full gospel in it, and uh, someone who was ready and waiting. So you may get an interruption of Satan, and then you may get a, a counter by God. And I'm telling you, many people don't go out and witness, and you're 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 losing a wonderful. There's nothing more when you when you finished a day. Whatever you plan on doing, I mean, we we have done farmers market, we've done flea markets, we have done uh, carnivals, we have done back in Connecticut under. They'll have several things. They meet on the green. We've had after school uh, the ministry. We had the downtown ministry. Well, this oh, hey, there's an event over. I mean, we've had all kinds of ministries, and when you get in the car. You're on your way home. It's just glorious. And I'm trying to remember what I was going to say before, but I forgot. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I apologize. But there is just things that is going to happen in a public ministry. Satan's going to be there. No, uh, not everybody gets saved. There are many that go to Broadway, and there are a few that go through the straight gate, and the many of the many are going to be, when you go out there, go to plant the seeds, the devil or Satan is going to prevent them from doing right. And you, you got to get that down. You got to realize that. You're not going to get results. I'm trying to think what I wanted to say. My mind went off. It was probably the devil. I thought it was good. Um, I should just stop. Let me think a moment. Satan does not want God to get the praise. And he'll cause any kind of distraction that he can. And this is not what I wanted to say, but this, if you're going witnessing with somebody else, and particularly door knocking, and you get into somebody's house and you're with somebody, the second person who's not talking, their job is to pray. And their job is respectfully keep the interruptions 
away from the from the person doing the speaking and the hearers. In other words, if you go in the house and there are people that got children, try in a respectful way entertain the children. I had one house I was I was at I don't I forget it was a preacher or a friend of mine, and while he, while he was talking the TV was on. I got in front of the TV set and stood in front of the TV. Don't let the distractions if you can. But I just wanted to give you a couple ideas of what uh, Mark 4.15 and 4.4 is. That Satan will be there. And it's frustrating. It's really frustrating and it gets you mad. And I'm not talking about, you know, pull your hair out mad. You want to, you want to, you know, punch. It's just, oh. And it's also a mad, it's also kind of depressing. Like, oh, man, we went so far. But realize, you planted a seed. Maybe there'll be a watering later. Maybe God will get the victory in that person's life. Move on to somebody else. And I apologize. I could not think of that other thing I wanted to say. But your mind goes off. 